Hey guys, today I'm going to do a knife review. I won a knife uh, through a Facebook contest from Primal Edge Knives with uh, Joe Honeycutt makes these knives. This one is the Mako. You can find all of his knives on, uh, if you look up his Facebook page, Primal Edge Knives or message him, like I said, Joe Honeycutt. Um, so I'm going to do a little review on this one. I'm going to put it through some tasks. and But first, I'm going to let you get a little close-up of this knife. First off, I haven't used it that much. I've done a little bit of feather sticking, and I've shaved a little bit of arm hair. It's razor sharp. I mean, razor sharp. And uh, But right off the bat, the first impressions, it's a nice little knife. Um, the handle is very comfortable. A lot of times these small knives, they, they, um, the handles are maybe a little too thin or um, they don't fit in your hand very nice. This one I'd have to say uh, fits in your hand knife, nice. Um, I have quite a few knives. I'm, I don't really know all the technical terms for like the grinds and stuff like that, but I know what I like in a knife and I know what's going to work good for me. This knife handle, I can tell right off the bat, it's going to be comfortable to use. It's not going to be, it's not going to have any wear spots or give me any wear spots or blisters or anything like that if I put it through some heavy use. I can tell. I mean, it's it's a nice, comfortable handle. Uh, the steel that he uses is an O1 tool steel. I've got a few knives in O1, and it's never let me down. It's great steel. Um, the grind on it. All these specs you can ask Joe Honeycutt for the for the technical stuff on it, but I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it looks like a Scandi grind. Um, he's got the grind far enough up the knife to where you can make it, you can sharpen it, and he has sharpened it to a super shallow angle, if that makes sense. Just basically, you can just make this sucker razor sharp, and that's what he's done. So I'm going to get a little closer and and let you get a close-up of this. So here it is. Nice wood handles. Brass, or uh, Maybe those are copper pins. That's the grind. There's his logo. Primal Edge Knives. So, all the technical specs and everything you can, you can contact him about. Um, the one thing I guess I don't know is what the Rockwell um, hardness of this is. But it's approximately, at its widest point there, what's that, an inch and three eighths? And of course I have a magnetic tape measure. Overall length of the blade looks to be about maybe three and three eighths, just under. And then overall length of the knife looks to be about seven inches. So. You can see it, it fits in my hand pretty nice. So there you go. I'm going to do just a little tiny bit of feather sticking. I have been doing some feather sticking just a little bit off camera. Uh, it works real good. I'm not a feather stick expert, but you know, even for me it, it works pretty good. The problem I have is that I tend to bite too deep into the wood and that's very easy to do with this sharp knife. So, I'll set this up. I forgot to mention the sheath that came with it. It's a Kydex sheath. He's got it set up for a neck carry. So, it fits in there. You know, I mean, it's a sheath. It fits in there good. So, nice neck carry knife. Anyway, we'll get to cutting. These are some of the, just a little messing around with the feather stick that I was doing.
just hardly any pressure. I've never really had to master this skill. I've never tried it that much. I need to probably work on it a little bit more, but anyway, you can see some of these are really uh, a little thicker than what I want. And that's just because, I mean, any pressure at all, well, first of all, it's because I'm not very skilled at this, but second of all, it's because any little pressure at all, and this knife just bites right in. So. said I sharp or I shaved a little arm hair. I'll do a little now. I don't know if you can hear that. Just barely applying any pressure. And that's I mean it just flakes right off. Look it's all over the blade. So I'm going to get set up and we'll do a little bit of batoning with this knife. Okay, so I've got my trusty rabbit stick here. And the first stuff I was doing a little bit of feather sticking, or if you could call it that, was some basswood. And it wasn't 100% dry yet, but it was just some basswood that I've been kind of messing with. This is some uh, poplar, and it's my favorite wood to make bow drill fires out of. There's always a controversy of whether you should baton with a knife. I personally think that if you have a knife that you pay good money for and it's a good steal, you should be able to baton with it. I don't think you need to baton oak necessarily, uh, maybe a little tiny piece just to get, you know, if you're doing a small barbecue type fire to cook something with, you know, you want to use oak or another good hardwood. Um, if you don't have a hatchet or an axe or tomahawk or something like that, if you want to process a small piece of hardwood, I think it should be able to handle that. Mostly though, I baton softwoods. And the reason I baton softwoods is because I'm trying to make a bow drill set very precisely that a knife gives me more control over than a tomahawk or a hatchet or something like that. Um, or making some just real small kindling or something. You're just barely tapping the blade. I mean, it's not really that big a deal. And if it can't handle that, it's not much of a knife, in my opinion. See, that's not a lot of pressure on a knife. I mean, it should be able to handle that no problem. And this one does. Nice kindling for a fire. Better than trying to do it some other way, I guess, if you didn't have anything. Just eating right through there. Now this is a smaller knife so I'm not going to try to process some you know 12 inch log or anything but to make kindling there's absolutely nothing wrong with this and this knife is handling it just fine. Nothing to it. A little bit of a knot or something right here. Um, I try to stay away from knots when I baton, but let's see. Right through it. Like I said, it's a soft wood, but it should be able to go through that. This one's a little bigger piece, a little longer, I guess.
I try not to baton right on the very edge, but you know, there's enough meat on there, you should be able to go through it. And I don't normally like to do that. That's putting a lot of pressure on the knife, but you know, we're testing it out. One thing I forgot to measure was the thickness of this blade. And I put my tape measure away, but it looks to be about an eighth of an inch or so, maybe three. Looks to me like it's about an eighth of an inch. But like I said, the specs Joe will have, but you know, that was a fairly longer piece of wood and it went right through. And when I gave it that little twist, you know, you don't want your knife to obviously bend or anything like that. And normally I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that, but we're giving her a shot here or giving her a try and see what it'll do. More of this feather sticking business just to kind of see. All right, I'm going to get reset up and we'll try something else. Hey guys, well, I'm back with uh, the mosquitoes and I'm going to try and cut this tree down with this Mako knife. I can't remember if I said the name of the knife, but it's a Mako. And this is a little drier piece of wood or little drier tree than I would normally try to cut down like this, but I'm going to give it a whirl anyway. I think it's a poplar tree and you know, this is a method that you could use if you didn't have anything else and you needed to make a little gig or something like that. You need to process this tree down. And the mosquitoes are bad, that's for sure. It's funny how right in my yard they're not too bad, but uh, you walk right into the woods and man, they just attack you. Well, that seems like it's working pretty good to me. If I can stop hitting the tree with my <laughs> rabbit stick and hit the blade, or hit the uh, spine of the blade here. But I'm not having to hit that hard either. It's definitely a sharp knife. There's no question about that. The question, and I, I really didn't have a question about it, but the thing I'm trying to test is to how good this edge is going to last after forcing it to do some of these things. That's pretty good for a little knife, I mean, I think. It's not very big. Handles that just fine. Well, evidently, I've disturbed a mosquito nest because they are crazy. But anyway, just a little test of what that sucker could do. I think it did a pretty good job pretty good to be able to process a piece of wood this big with this small a knife. Okay, on for the next task. Okay, now that we chopped down a tree with this little knife, um, we can make a hearth board for a bow drill fire. It's kind of a good test. It's a little bit big. This piece of wood's a little bit big for this little knife. So I'm going to kind of chop her down to size a little bit. Going through a big knot right there. And just peel off about a half inch or so. Kind of split about a half inch of this knife off. Or a uh, piece of wood off rather. Getting attacked by mosquitoes. Wow, this has been a bad year. Man.
maybe I can just shave that off rather than batoning it. I will baton this little area right here though. Oh, maybe not. It's coming off pretty easy. Now the test that I've put this particular knife through, this knife is really not designed for this. Um, probably said this a hundred or a couple of times anyway, but this knife, it's almost like working with a razor. The blade profile and the thinness of the blade allows it to be extremely sharp. Maybe not quite as durable as a little thicker grind, but it's going to be extremely sharp for you. I mean, you're going to be able to really cut some stuff. Just super sharp. So I'm just trying to get it a little bit flat here. I'm not going to actually make a bow drill fire, but I'm just going to make it a little bit flat. This hearth board, and then carve a notch in it. So I'm going to start my divot right here. One thing about this knife, it's a little different than most of the knives that I have. It comes to a pretty abrupt, sharp point. Uh, most of the knives I have have a little bit more belly on them, but this knife is going to be great for starting a bow drill divot for your bow drill fire. Just dives right in there. And that's plenty to get started on a bow drill fire. So now I'm just going to make the notch. I like to do a little bit of a tawny when I make the notch. First of all, I like to just kind of sh shape the outline of the notch. I don't want to baton all the way through. But now I have a start and stopping point for my knife. So right there, I can start and then the piece of wood shaves off at my stopping point. And then I can do the same thing from the other side. I've only done one other knife review. I have, I think I said this already, but I have quite a few knives. I uh, am kind of a collector of knives. I have a lot of cold steel knives. I have um, other knives from 01 Tool Steel, and I forgot what I was going to say with that part. Anyway, I had something profound I was going to say, I'm pretty sure. It's been a long day at work today. Anyway. Seems to be carving real good. Oh, I know what I was going to say. I, um, I wanted to comment about the handle on this knife. I did another knife review. I have uh, a lot of other knives, so I'm, you know, not like I just have one or two knives. I'm pretty familiar with knives. I'm familiar with the handles of the knives. I don't know all the technical terms and stuff like that with 
like I was saying, I think this is a Scandi grind or whatever. But anyway, I'm pretty familiar with knives, and this handle is extremely comfortable. I did one other knife review that I was doing some of these tests, but not all of them. But this notch test killed my hand on the last knife review that I did. And this knife, it's just super comfortable. I could use this all day. So I guess that's what I was going to comment on was how comfortable this handle is. So I'm just going to be taking my time here, trying to do a little bit of fine carving. Nothing too crazy, just digging in against the grain of the wood. And I want to be real careful here. This is kind of, I should have, to be safer, I should have been over here a little bit. But, you know, this can still be done. You just got to be kind of careful. Because if I slip with this knife, it's going to go straight to the bone, even with just a little bit of pressure. This is a, like I said, this is like working with a straight razor. This knife is pretty darn sharp. One of the sharpest ones I think I've come across. They're usually, for me, um, a Mora, the way I can get a Mora sharp is kind of a benchmark for me. Most knives you can't get quite that sharp. You can get them sharp, but not quite that sharp. Just because the Mora has such a thin blade, it's just naturally you can get the edge thinner. And this knife with this grind is similar to a Mora, maybe even more so, maybe even more. The blade is just extremely sharp. Now with that sharpness, there is going to be one flaw in this, and I just kind of want to mention it. It's a real good knife, but with the blade being that thin, it's going to be a little bit more fragile. So in other words, all these tree cut, you know, that tree cutting down I did, all this batoning, all that kind of crap, it's not the best idea to do with a knife like this. Can it be done? I just proved it can. Will the knife hold up? Absolutely. I'm still carving a notch out of it. It's you know, still perfectly functionable, but you are going to notice little chips in your blade if you do that. Now, is that the end of the world? No, because you just take a little stone and touch up the knife when you get back from doing whatever it was that you were doing. And with this type of steel, the edge will come back real good immediately. You don't have to sit there and try and hone it forever. Just a couple of swipes on a ceramic stone or I use a Arkansas fine oil stone sometimes. It's going to come right back. So now I'm just going to kind of work away just a little bit of the bottom of this notch. That's one thing I like to do. I've seen several people. I've, I learned this from several different people on YouTube and stuff. I think it adds just a little bit of oxygen to your to your coal, to your ember. Anyway, that was no problem. So, now like I said, you go chopping down trees with a knife like this, it's going to put some wear on it, okay? So I just want to be upfront about that right now. I abused this knife. This knife should have not been used to cut down a, you know, three inch diameter tree or whatever it was, let alone that tree was dead, so then the wood is going to be harder. Um, a green tree w wouldn't have been so bad. But anyway, this knife is still real sharp, but there are going to be some minor imperfections or minor, minor chipping in the blade. So I just want you to be aware of that. That's, like I said, I, I don't know if, I don't even know if they're coming up on the camera. I can, I can see them, but like I said, I abuse this blade and that's what you're going to get if you abuse a blade. So one of the last tests I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside and process a little fruit. I had a guy tell me that that was a real good, I don't think he was pretty joking, but tell me it was a real good test of a knife. So we just chopped, chopped down a tree, we did a bunch of carving with it. Now we're going to go process a piece of fruit.
Okay, Al, just to humor you, I'm going to cut a piece of fruit with this. Now, I don't have a lime. My wife went shopping today and didn't buy any fruit, so I have a leftover orange that I'm going to use. So, here we go. Now, there's a little bit of discoloration on that because I, I tend to oil my knives pretty good. So, maybe I should wipe that off real quick. You can make orange zest, uh, zest out of this. Some pretty thin, pretty thin slices. I wish I had a tomato, because I could see where cutting a ripe tomato or something like that would be a good test of a knife. See how sharp it is. I'm gonna cut some of this peel off, kind of get to the meat of the orange, and then we'll see how it works on that uh, soft part of the fruit. Besides, this is helping get some of the oil off my blade before I get to the meat where I'm going to eat it. Besides, it's just fun cutting with a sharp knife. It worked pretty good. And there is still quite a bit of grease on the knife. Like I said, I I tend to oil the heck out of my knives, but that's okay. I've eaten worse things than a little bit of oil. When I'm cutting this, I can just feel it biting into the cutting board, even though I'm not even trying that hard. It's a pretty thin. That's a pretty thin slice of orange right there. You can see through it. it tastes like an orange. Well, there you go. Anyway, try to get this so I'm not so close. Thanks very much, Joe. I appreciate this knife. This knife has done everything I've asked it to do. Chopped down a tree for me. I could see where it would make a bow drill set for me. And gave me a little after dinner snack. So, it's a pretty good knife. I like it. Thanks a lot.